Welcome to the Jim Show with your host, Jim. What I want to talk about today, once again, has to do with this concept of time. Now, when I first found Steve Pavlina's blog, it was because I was looking up uh, polyphasic and his experiments. I don't remember how I found, found out about polyphasic stuff um, to start off with, but I was directed to his blog as a really good example of someone that had done this. And this is funny, if you don't know, Steve, like, kind of hates the fact that he's famous for polyphasic sleeping and people ask him stuff about it to this day. Maybe hates too strong of a word, but you know, he does he doesn't like being kind of infamous for for polyphasic sleep. But that's how I found him and I actually spent the um the first evening that I found his work reading all his polyphasic stuff and then and then immediately going into a a polyphasic trial myself. I stayed up all night that night and tried to go and do a Uberman immediately after that. It didn't last all that long, but for a while after that, I kept trying to do it again and again, and it was really, really interesting to me. And the reason why is because I wanted to capture that extra time, like so much extra time, you know, all of these things that I could do if I just had the time. And really what that came down to is, I could play all these video games that I never had time to play if I just could be a polyphasic sleeper, which is stupid obviously. Um, and the reason this is interesting is because my my um, desire to be polyphasic, part of my desire to be polyphasic was this experience of um, like lucid dreaming and being able to go instantly to sleep and that feeling of being separate from from the world, right? Kind of like how I talked about when I was water fasting, like seeing other people and being like, you eat food? That's weird. Or you sleep during the night for the whole night? That's so strange. I thought that'd be really interesting to be kind of separate from from the world. But again, um, a major reason I wanted to do it was just for the time. And I have found now that my interest in polyphasic sleep is basically non-existent. Once I worked on my life and my health and worked on the distractions, everything completely changed. You know, there was a, it basically became a situation where I had time, all kinds of time, more time than I knew what to do with, and I didn't have anything to fill it. And eventually, you know, this calling came, this calling to help other people, to work on Yaz, um, came and filled that void. But man, it's just it's a huge, huge difference, and I don't I don't need more time because with the changes that I've made, I now. I have 16 hours a day, really, that I can dedicate to to energetic work, like active, great stuff, and you don't need that much time to just move your life massively forward. You know, Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Work Week, you can accomplish everything you need to do for a whole week worth of work to support yourself in four hours if you make, if you take the right steps, right? You can't do that with a 40-hour a week job, so why do you have one, right? Um, so that's what I found, like, like this whole idea of time is completely changed for me now. And when I get up in the morning and I do my morning routine and I do some of the other stuff that I do, like write down my goals and then immediately either make a blog post or one of these videos and I've accomplished so much already in that day that, that, um, all the rest of the day, it feels like, it feels like it's been so, it feels like more than like every day feels like a week because of not because it's strenuous, not because I'm tired, but because of the amount of stuff I get done. Um, just yesterday, I think, see, already, I feel like, okay, was it just yesterday that that happened? Yesterday, I had this really interesting talk during, during Toastmasters. I was talking to people about water fasting and telling some stories about the experience I had had. Um, at the lunch, so at this lunch, I had an experience. I'm not sure if I talked about it in the video or where, but I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes. So I had this experience where Allie ordered some soup and she didn't finish the soup and it really bothered me because of conditioning from my childhood about making sure you don't waste any food. Um, and I told that story at Toastmasters. I was like, where, where is this going? I told that story at Toastmasters and I was thinking about it yesterday evening and I was like, that was this morning. That happened today. And so much stuff had been accomplished between then that, you know, that was right early in the morning and the time when I was thinking about it, that it felt like it was a week ago. 
It really did. And again, it wasn't that I was tired. It wasn't that I had a stressful day. I just had to accomplish so much because I'm now focused on the stuff that speaks to my heart, that I'm drawn to do, that is my calling. I'm focused on that and doing that all the time that that time just isn't even, isn't even an issue, right? And so the message I think I have to people about this is that you do not have a lack of time in your life at all, okay? That is not an excuse to not work on your dreams, to not work on the things that you wanna do. It's just simply not. There are people that have less time than you and that make better use of it. You can cut out the distractions. You can take so many different steps to move your life forward. And time, don't use time, not having enough time as an excuse because you can change that. You just have to reorganize what you do and spend the time you do have better and it will all change. See you tomorrow.